What's up? It's Richie here with Study Fighting Football. This is week two of college football. These are the primetime games. The last video for the weekend, uh, for college anyway. Georgia State and North Carolina. Georgia State, they didn't look very good against Army. Lost 43-10. to 10. Cornelius Brown, 129 passing and a, and a pick. They turned over twice. North Carolina, though, they didn't look very good at all against Virginia Tech. They were they lost 17-10. to 10. Sam Howell lost the highest win in that game. 208 passing, one test on three interceptions. Josh Downs was about all they had going. Eight catches, 123, and a touchdown. This could be high scoring. Both offenses are pretty good, but I think North Carolina will be the one that outscores Georgia State. Or Idaho and Indiana. Indiana looked terrible against Iowa. Lost 34-6. Michael Penix, maybe worst, the worst game of his career. 14 of 31, 156, three interceptions there. They should be able to bounce back okay against Idaho and get a get a win. Our right, Missouri and Kentucky, this could be a pretty high scoring game. Both offenses looked pretty good last week, especially in Kentucky with the passing offense that they normally don't have there. At least not they haven't had it in a, in a long time. Uh, but starting with Missouri, they had a nice win get, win against the. Decent Central Michigan team, 34-24. Carter Basilic, 257, two touchdowns. Tyler Beatty ran for 203 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, he had nine sacks, led by three and a half sacks by Blaze Aldridge, who is a transfer from Rice and had a great, uh, one of the better transfers in the country. Obviously, three and a half sacks in that game. Whereas Kentucky, they had no trouble with Louisiana Monroe, 45-10. Will Levis, though, 367 passing, four touchdowns and one pick. Chris Rodriguez ran for 125 and a touchdown. Josh Ali ran for, or had five catches, 136 yards and a touchdown. And Wanda Robinson, a transfer from Nebraska, five catches, 125 and two touchdowns. They put it up, uh, they had 554 yards of offense. They turn over three times if they want. To be able to beat Missouri, they can't do that because Missouri should be able to make them pay. Defensively, though, Kentucky did have six sacks in that game. This will be a really, really tough game. Kentucky's only favored by five. Both quarterbacks are, are good. Um, both running backs are good. They have some good receivers. I'm... I might give, just because of what Missouri did... With all those sacks, I mean, nine, yes, Central Michigan. Central Michigan's not a bad team, and nine sacks against anybody's good. If they can get that pressure on Will Levis, that should give Missouri an edge. So I'm actually going to go against what Vegas is picking. I'm going to say Missouri comes out with the victory, but that should be a really fun game, possibly pretty high-scoring game to watch. Austin Payne, Ole Miss. Ole Miss looked great offensively and, more importantly, defensively against Louisville. 43-24. to Matt Coral, 381, passing a touchdown, plus 55 rushing and a touchdown. Dontario Drummond, 9 catches, 177 yards, and a touchdown for the 6th straight game. They should have no trouble with Austin Pay. Howard and Maryland. Maryland had a good game against West Virginia, and they won 30-24. to Talia Tagovailoa, 332 passing, 3 touchdowns. Tayon Fleet Davis, 123 rushing. Dante Dimas, 6 catches, 133, and 2 touchdowns. Raheem Jarrett, 6 catches, 122, and a touchdown. Defensively, had 3 sacks and 4 turnovers. They should be able to get to 2-0 pretty easily against Howard. McNeese against LSU. I got, I'm pretty sure I picked that upset. UCLA beating LSU last week. Defensively, Offensively, LSU looked good, pretty good. Max Johnson, 330 passing, three touchdowns in a, in a pick. Kayshawn Boot, nine catches, 148 yards, and three touchdowns. And defensively, they did have four sacks, but they gave up way too much. Their defense, could, their secondary couldn't cover anybody. Their defensive line couldn't do anything against UCLA. Even Derek Stingley missed the tackle that led directly to a touchdown. LSU should be able to bounce back and beat McNeese State, but LSU... You're going to have trouble. You're going to, you're going to struggle this season. All right, Washington and Michigan. This game kind of lost its luster because Washington was at, actually upset by one double-A Montana, 13-7. Dylan Morris had a horrible game, 2-26 passing, but three interceptions. Michigan looked pretty good against Western Michigan, 47-14. Cade McNamara, 136, two touchdowns. Blake Corn ran for 111 in a touchdown. They put up 551 yards. This game may not be close. Uh, seeing what Washington did, didn't do against Montana, Michigan may destroy Washington here. All right, Jacksonville State and FSU. FSU, they were losing decently to Notre Dame. They came back to tie it. They lost in overtime, 41-38. Jordan Travis sucked at quarterback like we thought. 9-19, 132 touchdowns, three picks. 
uh, in one rushing. Mackenzie Milton, the transfer from UCF, came in. They moved it up and down the field. They better start Mackenzie Milton. If they do, they may not lose the rest of the season. Uh, Jashawn Kerman looked pretty good. 144 rushing and a touchdown. They shouldn't have any trouble with Jacksonville State. All right, Vanderbilt, Colorado State. Both teams lost to one double A teams this weekend. Vanderbilt looked especially bad, losing 23-3. Ken Seals, 195 and two picks. Colorado State, they lost to South Dakota State, uh, 42-23. to Todd Santillo, 304 passing and a touchdown. The two guys for Colorado State that I highlighted last week, their tight end, Trey McBride and Dante Wright, both went off and showed up, and that's about it. McBride, 13 catches, 116 yards. And Dante Wright, 6 catches, 103. I don't care if it's Vanderbilt and the SEC. They can't score. They can't score. I'm going to say Colorado State actually will, will win that game. All right, San Diego State and Arizona, kind of an interesting one. San Diego State, they had a nice win against New Mexico State, 28-10. to Greg Bell went off for 161 yards and a touchdown. They turned over three times. They can't do that against Arizona. They forced five sacks, three turnovers, and had a pick six. Arizona was 0-5 last year and looked bad. They played a decent UIU team and only lost 24-16. to Gunnar Cruz had a good game, though. 336 passing and touchdown a pick. Stanley Barry Hill, 12 catches, 102 yards, and defensively forced a safety. So... Arizona, they were bad last year. Normally, they have a decent offense. Uh, offense. San Diego State never has a good offense. They normally have a good running back and a great defense, and that seems to be what they have this season. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Arizona gets gets a, a win here. It'll be kind of a nice win against a normally good team from the Mountain West, San Diego State. San Diego State should still be good and win eight, nine, maybe ten games this year. But I'm gonna say Arizona wins wins this one. All right, Cal Poly and Fresno State. Fresno State played a close game against Oregon like I thought. They only lost 31 to 24. Jake Hayner, 298 passing, a touchdown uh, touchdown pass and a touchdown run. They had three turnovers in that game. If they didn't turn over three times, maybe they could have beaten Oregon and they should have no trouble uh, put, getting past Cal Poly. Are right, Utah and BYU, the holy boy here. Could be an interesting game. Maybe uh, the experts will say it's interesting. I don't think so, and this is why. Utah beat Weber 40-17. to Charlie Burrow, 233 passing, two touchdowns at a pick. Tateman Thomas, 107 rushing, two touchdowns. BYU did beat Arizona 24-16. Jaron Hall looked fine, 198 passing, two touchdowns, 36 rushing. Neil Pau, eight catches, 126, and two touchdowns. They had four sacks there, but BYU lost way too much offensively. I still think BYU maybe goes 6-6. Six and six. And then Utah is one of the better teams in the entire Pac-12. I think Utah wins. I think Utah wins much bigger than people will, will, will say. All right, Stanford and USC. Stanford did not look very good against Kansas State. Lost 24-7. Tanner McKee, 118 passing and a touchdown. USC look, ended up look pretty, looking pretty good against San Jose State. They were down. They were only up 13-7, I think, in the third or fourth quarter. Keaton Silvis looked fine, 256 passing, two touchdowns. Drake London, 12 catches, 137 yards, and a pick six. This could be pretty close. Stanford does have a pretty good running back in Austin Jones, but I'm not. They, I don't think they'll have the quarterback to keep up with Keaton Slovis in that offense. So I'm going to go USC in that rivalry game there. UNLV and Arizona State. UNLV lost in double overtime to Eastern Washington. A good Eastern Washington team. They're normally one of the best teams in 1AA, but they lost 35-33. Charles Williams ran for 172 yards and two touchdowns. They did have three sacks and forced three turnovers. If they want to beat a good Arizona State team, they'll have to do that. Arizona State looked, did had no trouble with Southern Utah, 41-14. Jaden Daniels, 132 passing and 40 rushing. They forced four turnovers. This even though UNLV looked okay against the DC and Eastern Washington team, Arizona State could be maybe one of the best teams in the entire Pac-12, and I think Arizona State should come out with the victory there. Our right, Idaho State, Nevada. Nevada looked really good against Cal, beating them 22 to 17. Carson Strong, 3-12 passing, two touchdowns and a pick. They should be able to beat Idaho State. And the nightcap, Hawaii and Oregon State. I'm excited for this one. I think this could be extremely fun. Lots of passing, lots of points being scored. The over-under is 63 and a half. That's how you know it's going to be. I think it'll be high scoring. Hawaii beat Portland State 49 to 35. Shevin Cordero, 305 passing, three touchdowns and a pick, plus 66 rushing. Dade Hunter ran for 128 and a touchdown. They had 573 yards. They turned over four times. They don't want to do that against a uh, pretty potent Oregon State. They did force four turnovers, so maybe they can do that and get a, get a win against Oregon State. Oregon State, they did lose to Purdue 30 to 21. 
but normally have a really potent uh, passing offense. Now, Hawaii does have to go to Corvallis, Oregon to do it. This is kind of a tough game. If Hawaii can get that offense going, then uh, they could they could beat Oregon State. Um, I'll give Oregon State the, the slight edge, though. Oregon State's picked by 11. They might win by, like, 3. I'll go Oregon State, but that also, to me, I can't wait for that game. That's one of my anticipated games of the day. So those are my picks for my primetime games. Check out all my other videos, too. Peace.